So today's date is April 22nd, 2022. My name is Noah Leahy and I'm a seventh grade religious school student at Temple Shalom in Greenwich, Connecticut. I will be interviewing my peepa or grandpa, whose name is Jerry. And this interview is being recorded for the oral history archives of the Jewish Historical Society of Fairfield County. So good afternoon, peepa. Good afternoon, Noah. <laughs> okay, so let's start with you telling me your full name. Uh, Gerald Israel Lefkowitz. Do you have a nickname? Jerry. Um, who are you named after, if you know, or were named after someone? I'm named after my father's father, whose name was Gedalia. That's his uh, Yiddish name or Hebrew name. Okay. Um, when and where were you born? I was born in the Bronx uh, in, uh, on July 7th, 1940. Um, where did you grow up with, who, where did you grow up and who lived with you growing up? Uh, I grew up uh, in the Bronx, uh, on, in the East Bronx, a Jewish neighborhood. Uh, and I lived with my parents and my uh, older sister. Um, do you know where your family was originally from? Like um, Europe or Italy? From Europe, where? In my, Europe? Both my parents were from Poland. And do you know anything about your parents' immigration to the United States? Like when, who came over, and where did they, they enter the U.S.? Yes. My father came over, I think, before, after World War I and before 1920. And my mother came uh, uh, maybe a couple of years later, in the er very early 1920s. Nice. Okay. So please take one of your artifacts out that Mima brought you. Well, this one here. Okay. Um, so please tell me about this artifact or explain what it is. It's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, I think it's called the Yad. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, it's when you're reading the Torah, it, it points out where, where you are in the reading. Now, I never read the Torah, uh, except at my bar mitzvah, but uh, I guess my family had this and just passed it down. Um, so do you kind of answer this, but uh, do you know where it came from? I'm not sure. I think it's from, uh, from uh, Poland. Okay. From my... Yeah. Um, how... the, the, by the way, these are my parents. <laughs> nice. That's when they first, this was in the early 1920s when they first met. Aren't they beautiful, handsome? They beautiful. are beautiful. Beautiful. Um, but it's, why, not, it's oh. old. Yeah. And why is it special to you and I guess like our family? Uh, we've had it all these years and it's something that, uh, you know, is part of my past or okay. part of my family's past. Today's date is April 23rd, 2022. My name is Rachel Goldenberg and I am a seventh grade student at Temple Shalom Religious School in Greenwich, Connecticut. I'll be interviewing my grandfather, whose name is Alan. This interview is being recorded for the Oral History Archives of the Jewish Historical Society of Fairfield County. Good morning, Zadie. Let's mm -hmm. start with something easy by you telling me your full name. Alan Stanley Zegan. Do you have any nicknames? I do. Ziggy. That was my school nickname. And who were you named after, if you know? I was named after my maternal grandfather, whose name was Solomon, so they called me Stanley. When, uh, when and where were you born? I was born in London, England, in June of 1936. And where do you live now? I live in Toronto, Canada. That's where, I know. That's where I've been for the last 50 years. Where did you grow up and who lived with you growing up? I grew up in London, England. Uh, my brother, well, my father and my mother lived with us. And part of the time, my uncle and my grandmother lived with us part of the time. That's very interesting. Do you know where your family was from originally? My mother's mother and father, originally from Russia. Um, my father's mother or father, uh, they uh, were born in Great Britain, but their ancestors were Dutch and German. 
Do you know anything about your ancestors' immigration to can to England? Um, my mother's mother and father left Russia in the late nineteen hundreds, um, early eighteen late eighteen uh, hundreds, uh, due to the Russian pogroms when they were attacking the Jews and killing the Jews in Russia. So they emigrated and went to the UK at that time. Um, today's date is March 23rd, 2022. My name is Josie Friedman. I am a seventh grade religious school student at Temple Shalom in Greenwich, Connecticut. I will be interviewing my grandfather, whose name is Papa Thorpe. Um, this interview is being recorded for the Oral History Archives of the Jewish Historical Society of Fairfield County. Good morning, Papa. Morning. <laughs> okay, let's start with you telling me your full name. Uh, Franklin Paul Friedman. Um, do you have a nickname? Not really. <clears throat> Who are you named after, like, if you know? I named, I'm named after my grandfather, my uh, paternal grandfather. When and where were you born? Uh, I was born uh, on 10 41 uh, in a small town in the south, southern part of France called Moissac, M-O-I-S-S-A-C. -S okay, where did you grow up and who lived with you growing up? Well, I grew up in several different places. Because I was born during World War II, mm -hmm. so uh, we lived in um, in Wausau, uh and uh, let's see, I was so I was born in '41, and so in 1947 uh, we moved to the United States, and we lived in first we lived in Cleveland. And then we lived in New York City. Then we lived on a farm in Colchester, Connecticut. And then I lived in Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. Um, do you know where your family was from originally? Yeah, originally they were from uh, Hungary, which was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Do you know anything about your parents or other relatives' immigration to the United States? Or your immigration? Well, uh, our, our uh, immigration to the United States uh, was similar to what I had said before. We lit, uh, I was born in 1941, uh, and uh, we uh, lived in this small town in the southern part of France. Uh, this was um, part of France that was controlled by the Nazis, uh, called Vichy, uh, Vichy France. And uh, we lived in a, um, initially for about three years, we lived in a, um, a Jewish scout camp. So we lived in, in uh, a, a small, uh, a small town uh, where the uh, the French community protected the uh, uh, Jews. Um, At the end of the war in 1945, we uh, applied to uh, uh, come to the United States, and we were sponsored by one a distant relative, and uh, came to the United States in 1947. We came over on the Queen Elizabeth uh, with several hundred people, and we went to Ellis Island. And, uh, and uh, from, uh, from 
there we went first, we went to uh, Cleveland and then New York, Colchester and Hartford. Okay. What did you and your childhood friends do for fun? Uh, we played ball and we hung out. We played ball all the time. We played stickball, we uh, punch, ball. Uh, punch ball, uh, all the games that, that uh, they played in, in the Bronx during the 40s and 50s. Uh, Very little scully, uh, you know, hopscotch, you know. Yeah. And then we hung out. We hung out at the candy store yeah. on the corner. Um, now I would like you to pick a Jewish holiday and describe your memories of how you and your family celebrated it when you were growing up. Well, you know, the thing that comes to mind is, is Passover. Uh, my mother had three sisters who lived in the, in the, uh, in the neighborhood and uh, two of the sisters didn't have any children. So they came to our Sadies. So it was my two aunts and uncles and uh, I'm not sure who else came. Uh, and my mother would, uh, you know, spend the entire day cooking and stuff like that. Yeah. And it was, uh, you know, memorable. Yeah. We went to shul also on the high holy days, Helen. Oh, and, you know, on the high holy days, we, we went to shul and I sat next to my father and, you know, and I couldn't wait to, to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I grew up during the Second World War, and as you know, that was the Holocaust time of the Second World War, but I was a bit young to understand about the Holocaust. So I grew up in London, England at that time, and uh, my, my dad was working because he was working in the gas works, which was national, national importance to keep the gas flowing. And uh, we lived through the bombing and we lived through the war. And, uh, it was just a horrible time in the in England uh, during the war, so that's where I sort of grew up and uh, and uh, had my education. That's very interesting. What did you and your childhood friends do for fun? Well, the only fun we had in those days was playing in the bombed out buildings, and it was a very dangerous pastime because, as you know, you know when when you got bomb damage, the, the structure that's left is is quite quite uh, da dangerous and of course the fun was we'd go to the most dangerous parts of the, of the building and hope that the floor wouldn't collapse so that was our fun and it was it, it was fun it was we had no toys and no, nothing like you guys have got today that was very cool and interesting so but now i would like for you to pick a jewish holiday and to describe your memories of how you and your family would celebrate it when you were a child uh, my favorite holiday was passover so my grandmother was the one that started the, the Seder. So it was all the family around the Seders. And um, then my mother carried on with the Seder services when my grandmother passed away. And so we got to be with the family and it was a lot of fun singing the Seder songs and uh, eating matzah was de delightful, as you know. <laughs> When you were around my age, did you have a favorite radio or television program or movie that you listened to or watched regularly? And what was it? Well, it was a silly program called The Goon Show. And it was radio. You know, we, we, we were brought up uh, before television. And I remember when I, I must have been 13 or 14 years old, was the first television we had, the black and white television. I'd love to get it. But, but the radio was, was the was the form of entertainment. And we, we, uh, for years, we just had the radio, and uh, these radio shows and the news on the radio, and The Goon Show was a, a silly British show, but you have to have a British sense of humor, you know, to, to understand The Goon Show. And so that was, our entertainment was, was the radio, no TV. Where did you go to school, and what was your favorite subject? I went to a school called Battersea Grammar, Grammar School, and it was like a higher level of, uh, you had to pass a state scholarship to get into a grammar school, which, which I did. Uh, my favorite subjects were chemistry and physics. Um, so now I would like to ask you a few questions about your life growing up. The, uh, 
the childhood that I mainly remember was in Colchester, Connecticut. We lived on this uh, small chicken farm uh, where life was very difficult, but we had a, my brothers and I and, uh, had a great time growing up. There was also a, not far from our house, a Jewish community center where we spent some time. Uh, but uh, life on life, uh, rural life uh, was uh, was fun when you, you were small. Um, when you were a teenager, did you have a bar mitzvah or any other celebration? And if you did, what was important to you about it? Okay, I did have a bar mitzvah. Yeah. And uh, I was like sweet. very immature, so I wanted a party. And uh, my uncle told my parents, don't give him a party. What, what you should do is the money you would give him for a party, invest in IBM stock. That's what he told my mother. Uh, but, you know, I whined and cried, whatever. And so I had a party. Uh, and it was uh, on Tremont Avenue in the Bronx in one of these uh, catering halls. And I remember, I remember the, one of the only things I remember is the name of the band. Max Pamerantz was the name of the band. Okay. How did you meet Grandma and what was it like starting a life together? Uh, I met uh, your grandmother uh, at work. We both worked for the New York City Welfare Department. We were in the same unit and either I was behind her or she was behind me, I don't remember. But we met and uh, the reason we uh, really got together was uh, tragically, at uh, when uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated, we we were so upset. We walked downstairs and then decided that we would go into Manhattan and and go to Temple Emanuel uh, for some kind of a memorial service. And that's how we you know kind of bonded. Yeah. How did you meet my grandmother, and what was it like to start a life together? I met your grandmother. Um, in a place in Belgium, and I, I was there alone, and, and uh, your grandmother was sitting in the dining room with her parents, and I tried to figure out a way of approaching your grandmother, and the, uh, there was an elevator very close by, and I thought in my little mind, if your grandmother gets in that elevator, I would immediately leave what I'm eating, even though I might like it, I would leave it, and I would rush to the elevator, and, and make a, uh, an introduction of myself. Uh, and so happens, that's exactly what happened. Your grandmother got up, went to the elevator, I left my meal, I rushed in the elevator, and I noticed she was wearing a mog and dovid, and I said, oh, you're Jewish, are you? With a brilliant observation on my part that she was Jewish. And uh, I said, hi, how you doing? Uh, you know, maybe we should get together and have a chat, and whatever, whatever. And she said, yes. And, um, and I went back to Holland with her and her parents, and I proposed. I said, will you marry me? And she said, yes. And that's the story of uh, what, what happened. It's very touching and <laughs> very interesting. So did anyone in your family serve in the military? And if yes, could you tell me more? Yes, um, I had two uncles, both in the British Army. One of my uncles uh, was a commissioned officer, a captain in, in the British Army, and one of my uncles was um, was a sergeant, and the sergeant got wounded in the um, when they invaded on June the sixth, nineteen forty four, which was my birthday, of course. Uh, so I was whatever I was old. I can't work it out now. My brain. Um, he was wounded in the invasion, and I remember that he was uh, in hospital in England for a long time, but, but they both, I had two uncles that served in the British Army. Mm. Did anyone in your family serve in the military? I, I, I know the answer. Yeah, well, I did. I was, um, I was a, a flight surgeon in the Air Force, which meant that because I had become a doctor, 
um, you, we took care of the um, the pilots and, uh, and everybody who was on flying status. We took care of their medical problems. So it was like being a general practitioner for the people who were flying. This was during the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any hobbies or special interests? If so, what are they? Well, I uh, I play golf and you know and I play bridge and uh, I play pickleball and I do a lot of uh, I wouldn't say artwork, but I make these wood assemblages. Yeah. And uh, you know I love doing that. I don't do uh, much of that mu anymore. Okay. But, but uh, that's what I've done, you know, all my retirement. Uh, so. Um, now we're going to wrap up with a few general questions. But what inventions have amazed you most during your lifetime and why they amazed you? Uh, the internet, you know, computers, uh, uh, this. Can you see it? Yeah, it's, your it's phone. called a like a phone, yeah. right? To me, that's amazing. I could press this, and within thirty seconds or less, I could be talking to Reiner's cousin or my cousin in Israel. Yeah, and that is totally amazing to me. It freaks me out thinking about it. No, you could do that on a phone also. But this, you can find out stuff. Yeah. Um. What are you most thankful for? Oh, I'm most thankful for you and your sister and uh, your cousins. And uh, uh, that's, you know, I'm blessed. And I know I'm blessed uh, to have such wonderful, such wonderful artistic and talented grandchildren. And finally, what advice do you have for future generations? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, what advice do I have? Uh, just be true to yourself uh, and go with the flow and uh, you know, get educated and uh, you know try to make a mark on the world. Uh, yeah. look, around you. look around you. And look around at the one <laughs> that yeah. it help. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me, and oh. I'm excited to see how it turns out. So what inventions have amazed you most during your lifetime and why? Inventions? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the miracle of uh, computers that totally, totally uh, changed my world. Yeah. I, I never re really adapted to it as much as I, I could have, mm -hmm. but it, it changed my practice of medicine and uh, and uh, I can see how it's totally changed all my my kids and my grandkids' uh, lives. Yeah. Um, what are you most thankful for? Most thankful? I'm most thankful for the family that we have, uh, my kids and grandkids. Um, and what advice do you have for future generations like me? Plastics. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no there, there was a, there was a movie, uh, and where uh, where uh, this. This teenager goes up to this older guy, uh, and the older guy puts his arm around him and says, "Plastics, my boy. That's what you should go into." No advice. I think uh, I think uh, be good at something that you do, and be enthusiastic. Get all the education you can get. Be kind. Kind to people. Be generous to people with your time and Okay. Um, thank you for talking to me. This was really nice.
What inventions have amazed you most during your lifetime and why? Well, the, uh, the computer and the calculating machines were unheard of in my uh, early career. We used to use a slide rule, which is a contraption that you worked out. You worked out arithmetic on this thing called a slide rule. And then I remember the time when the first calculator came, came on, uh, on board. And then, and then the computer made all the difference. So in my working life, half of it was, was manually with a slide rule and half of it was, was a computer. What are you most thankful for? Most fa thankful that, uh, that my family, um, uh, of which you're one of my grandchildren, um, the, the family life is, is, is the main issue in, in my life at the moment. I have a son and a, and a daughter, who's your, mo your mother, and five grandchildren. So that's my, that was my objective in, um, in life, is, is to produce a family, which I did. They're all, my family are all beautiful, and um, I'm very lucky and thankful that I have them. What advice do you have for future generations like me? My advice is uh, stay focused, you know, be interested in what you're doing and get yourself a decent education and, uh, uh, and enjoy, enjoy what you're doing. Thank you so much for spending the time to talk with me. I've had a great time today, so thank you. And it's been an extreme pleasure.